In today's show, we're gonna talk about essential cooking tools. So these are the three different things that we use all the time to make healthy, whole, real food recipes in our household. We're gonna start out with a basic crock pot. Uh, I wanna say I got this at a Williams Sonoma or something on sale for about $39. The crock pot is fantastic because I think there is a method to the madness of cooking in bulk, saving it in the re refrigerator, so you have easy access to whole, real food. Because if you don't have food, accessible in the moment when people are hungry, they're gonna to gravitate towards uh, junk food. So a crock pot is just found is foundational in our household. What I like about this one, I know it sounds a little basic, but it has these clamps here, so you can bring this to a friend's house. Oftentimes I'll make dishes before I go over to a friend's house, something unique, something different. We'll talk about it in other videos, like fermented sweet potatoes, for example, or f fermented potatoes, or uh, beef heart, beef tongue stew, something like that. I'll make something unique and get people to try it, and they're like, wow, I never knew that you could ferment potatoes, for example. Um, so this is a, a great staple. I like to use this with the clamps on, on the slow cook version, so there's a low and a high, I like on the low version uh, for about four hours. So anytime you're, you're cooking sprouted or soaked rice or grains with any sort of protein, four to five hours is all you need and then you can kick it into low mode and put this right in the fridge. Now the difference between the pressure cooker and the slow cooker, obviously the pressure cooker, if you're in a pinch and you wanna cook something quick in like seven to 10 minutes, you can put on the pressure cooking mode. I generally don't do that. Not that there's a problem with cooking fast, but I, I do think there's evidence to suggest, particularly when you cook carbohydrate-based foods like sweet potatoes, butternut squash, things like that, grains, quickly, I think it makes the carbohydrates more, uh, it increases the glycemic index. And so I like to cook foods slow and low. That's just something that, that humans have done for a long time, and I think there's some benefits there. So why do we have two of these different slow cooking options. Well, because one is going all the time and then uh, oftentimes we have two going. So we might cook like a protein dish in one and maybe some tubers or root vegetable dish in another. And in other videos, I'll share with you some of the dishes that we make in our household. But these are going nonstop. And so we're, we're using these constantly, cooking in bulk, batching our cooking, and then using that for school lunches, using that for family dinners, using that for snacks, using that for lunches, you know, as we're moving throughout the day, which is just fantastic. So you do a little minimal prep in the morning, set it and forget it. And that's the idea. I think that's the tagline of one of these uh, slow cookers. So uh, both of which are great. When it comes to cooking bone broth specifically, I like the slow cooker as opposed to the pressure cooker. I just find that it gets a little bit more gelatinous. And so I'll cook this for about 12 to 18 hours to make some bone broth. Now let's move on to the pans. You know, these pans get expensive. You know, the stainless steel pans, I'm not into the non-stick pans. We do use, I use cast iron. I have several different cast iron skillets, but just to make things simple, I, I strongly suggest you invest in a high quality stainless steel pan. You will use this for years. There's um, some different pans that we've had for 20 years now, and they're still going strong. So you invest in a nice set early on, you're not gonna have to uh, replace this. I know there's all sorts of non-stick pans out there. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because some of the non-stick material has endocrine disrupting chemicals. I, I go to people's households all the time and I see them cooking on the Teflon pans and there's scrapes from a knife or a fork or some sort of utensil. And some of that could be getting in your food, which is obviously not good for your health. And you wanna be eating healthy food. That's the whole point. And I'm holding a wooden spoon here because I don't like to use plastic in my cooking. This gets hot, whether we're cooking eggs, mushrooms, uh, potatoes, ground beef, you know, liver, whatever, uh, we're using a wooden spoon. And so this is dishwasher safe, but we generally hand wash this. So these are the utensils. Now the way to keep food off the stainless steel pan is to use plenty of butter. We've been lied to about the harms of butter uh, since Americans have switched off butter to the industrial seed oils. We have seen an associated decline in cardiovascular health, increases in obesity and the like. And so I like to cook with liberal amounts of butter. And so that's how you prevent your eggs from sticking. So what we'll do, if we put a ton of butter on here, cook eggs, we'll soak it with a little water for about five minutes and let the dogs lick it all up. And then of course we'll wash it before using it again. But that's a great way to prevent the food from accumulating. So you can be a really good, healthy, whole food cook 
with these three simple utensils and cooking apparatuses. Uh, different applications, different pros and cons of each, but going back and forth between the three enables you to cook whole real food right in the convenience of your own home and tinker around with different recipes and batch cook. I think that's the most important thing. So in future videos, I'll share with you staples, what to buy at the grocery store, staples in our household and other related recipes. Hopefully you found this helpful. In the description below, I will link links to all these different uh, cooking apparatuses that we use in our household. You can check them out on Amazon or other sources, but definitely invest in a slow cooker. This is ceramic, so that's nice. You're not, I know people are doing air fryer recipes. Not a fan of that. It has Teflon, not a big fan of that. Um, if you like the pressure cooker idea, I do like this as well. It's a little bit more cumbersome. Sometimes it builds up pressure and then you have to steam it and it blows steam everywhere. I like to do that outside so I'm not creating a mold problem in the household. But these are my two go-to staples and we'll, we'll use this periodically as well. Um, again, the nice thing about this guy is you can, um, it has a handle, you can put this in the fridge after you're, you're done cooking. So appreciate you watching this video. If you got value, please hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comment section and we'll catch you on a future cooking video down the road.